And we are back and joining us for our first conversation is none other than attorney Audrey Matura. Here to talk to us all about moving ahead together and of course other topics surrounding her new activist group. Good morning. Hi, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank good you morning. for having me. I'm a little bit hoarse, but I couldn't let you all down, so I'm here this morning. <laughs> perfect, perfect. Thank so let's begin first of all by discussing the motivation behind putting together this grassroots movement, Matt? Yeah. Well, there are several uh, on the personal level for me, having been in over 30 years of activism in every profession I've been, I feel that I've spent a whole lifetime trying to see changes. I have made changes, even when I don't get credit for them. But the thing is not to get to credit is to see the changes. But as I make those changes, I still see key issues that haven't been resolved. And I'm thinking, well, I'm going into my twilight years. Let me use my energy doing that. I mean, I've said it publicly. I wanted to leave Belize and just go live somewhere else. Mm -hmm. All my family has left um, over the years. I'm the only one here fighting still. And it didn't work out that way. You know, it's like some things you want, but the doors don't open. And all doors lead me right back to Belize to stay involved. So that's on a personal level. Mm -hmm. On the um, social level, I think there's just so many social ills that can be easily resolved. And when I say easily resolved, you just need to have the political will, the leadership will, and it's not there. And I've seen over the years that my advocacy has been effective. Whether people say so or not, I have seen it. I saw it through um, COVID when I demanded certain things. I see it even today, a simple example the other day with the, um, the police truck in Hopkins. My advocacy is effective. They'll never say, oh, we do it because she brought it up. But because when I do my advocacy, I come with facts, I come with a passion, I come with having the, the pulse of the people, knowing that they will support that. So that's on a social level. And then honestly, on the legal slash constitutional level, I find myself where I found myself in 1998, where there is a crumbled opposition. And it is very unfortunate because our constitution, which I always carry around, actually makes provision for there to be a constitutional opposition, which is scary. It's scary for several reasons. Mm -hmm. One, there's a constitutional reform with the opposition not having enough um, votes. I mean, it might sound devious, it might sound extreme, but the present government could actually um, amend the constitution to remove the little power they already have. Mm -hmm. And you might not think about it, but we have seen where unimaginable things people have tried to put in the constitution. So I think I'm stepping in the gap with the movement where um, the opposition is failing. They're failing miserably. Mm -hmm. Also on the constitutional level, um, I think that it's, it's a good idea that we want to consider constitutional reform. I honestly believe it's going along the wrong way. Everybody's in there with a self-interest. I do not believe that's the way to do it. And the way to do it is... First, I, this is my, my opinion. Mm -hmm. First, you have to educate the population about the constitution. Mm -hmm. I show you all are media people, and if I ask you, if you don't what's in this constitution, you don't know it. So if you don't know it, how can I go to you and I say, hey, what you want to change in it? You'd have to know what's there before, mm -hmm. what is working or not working, and then you say, that's what I want to change, yeah. right? That's not happening. Mm -hmm. You're going to people to ask them to change or to participate in something they don't understand. They will stand up at the... Um, the podium and a lot of them will decry poverty and crime, but they can't tell you how to solve it using the constitution. So I believe that the process should have been to, yes, okay. educate people first, to canvas people about some of the things, how they would want to see the society go, but pick specific topics. Like one of the hot topics is, is definitely the LGBTQ thing. So you have to pick topics like that. The other t topic which people don't understand is the death penalty. It's still in the constitution. How do you want us to reinforce it? Is it time to take it out because of the cases that we have? Um, the other topic that we definitely have to look at is the different women's rights. I mean, the LGBTQ rights are not trumping the women's rights and children's rights. It's not in here. We don't have education as a um, constitutional right. We have right to life, but we don't have right to land as a constitutional right. We don't have the right to health care as a constitutional right. So you're asking people who don't know what's there to say what's there. And you're leaving the topic wide open. It already mentions indigenous right. We've seen it tested in the court. So if you want to amend it, you just have to now amend it in line with what the, the, the laws are internationally and the decision. Can I say mm -hmm. this though? Mm -hmm. while, I, while I respect your opinion and where you're coming from, 
it's almost as if you're making an assumption that the persons who have been called to comprise this whole movement are not knowledgeable about the Constitution. And I would beg to defer. You do have people who are versed in the Constitution of Belize. Yes, there are a few. There are a few, but it's not the majority. You can't have a conversation with people. So there's like four of them that I would estimate based on the people I saw there, at least four of them. But they all have their own um, personal agenda or interest or group interest. So they will push what's theirs and I, I can't blame them. They're there for that. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying that the group, some of them are not um, enlightened with what they want. And I'm not saying they don't have a purpose. But the purpose is not in a commission that will tell us what to change. I believe the purpose would be for them to lobby their different groups with the topic, with the issues that we want. You see, when you do, when you think you will do a massive comprehensive change, that's not the best way because people are not very good at change and you might have contradiction. The thing is to do it, uh, in my belief, and I've seen it done in other countries, yes, you get a commission, like in the US when they got, not the UK, when they got a commission to revamp the criminal code, it took years. And whom did they get? All legal people. Mm -hmm. And what did they do? They looked at what is the trend. Um, they look at what the crime was. They look at what the police locked. They look at, and they came with a proposal. Then you take that proposal to the people who don't know all the details. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that what but you say will work. It means that you've given them a road map, and then you say to them, okay. But it can be argued still, Arjun, that mm -hmm. legal minds still in some cases do also have agendas. Mm -hmm. Because if, if you look at some lawyers who we would say understand what's in the Constitution, but if you look at their religious or their political leanings or what have you, there is still an agenda at play. Mm. I think this is where you're misunderstanding when I say get the legal people. Mm -hmm. I, let me clarify, I did not mean our Belizean lawyers who indeed a lot of them have their own political agenda mostly. Mm -hmm. And some of them have their little personal agendas. I'm not saying that doesn't exist. I need to clarify, when I say you get the professionals, I did not really mean local attorneys. Okay. Mm -hmm. There may be one or two of those, but you get the, the professors of law, the um, Anne-Marie Antoine type, you know, the, attor the attorneys who have become, um, their specialty is constitutional law. We have quite a few. Mm -hmm. They're not coming with a person, they're looking at a country, they're looking at your statistics, they're looking at your social demographic and everything, and they're looking at what you have and what you can change. And believe it or not, <coughs> we actually have one of the best constitutions in the region. So I'm Our constitution is modeled after, after the Canadian constitution. While it may need some improvements, what it does need is a lot of implementation of what's okay, in Okay, I'm listening so to you, Adjo. One second. Yeah. I'm listening to you, and what I'm hearing is perhaps a proposal that the change should come from without as opposed to from within where you actually do have people who are living under Belizean laws who are the ones that are being engaged in terms of making the changes. No, no. Because I think one could argue, argue that what would a professor outside of Belize no. Well, not know, how have to do with to how we are governed yeah, in Belize. This, this is where you all, you all misunderstand the constitution then. What our constitution is, is nothing new to the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. Our constitution may need to be updated in certain aspects, mm -hmm. but our constitution is nothing new in the com um, Commonwealth Caribbean or the entire Commonwealth of which we are part of. Mm -hmm. Why I'm saying you get the professionals is because you, the government, remember I said it's not that there's no use for these people, whether you want to call them a commission or not. Mm -hmm. What is it that you want that you are mm -hmm. saying the constitution? There are several aspects. There is the legislature. There is the judiciary, mm -hmm. there's the executive. What is it you want? Is it that you want the way the legislature operate to change? How we are governed to change? Is it the way you is it that you want to strengthen the executive? For example, we have people who are appointed only constitutionally. The Auditor General is one, the DPP is one, the Commission of Police is one. Is it that you want to put systems in place that give them better security of tenure, give them wider power? Is it that you want to change their power? Do you want to change your composition? The average person wouldn't know that there's a structure in the constitution. When constitutions came about, there is a, a skeletal structure or blueprint everywhere else. It is the meat on it that you want to change. For example, in the constitution as it stands right now, one of the things that it says in the preamble, it says that we should create an economic, an economic um, system that is just unfair to all mankind. Do we have that? 
I would say no. You hear what the people are saying? They're saying, oh, well, I don't like that foreigners get concessions and we don't con get concessions, or I don't like that one has a tax holiday. And we How do you then translate that mm -hmm. into constitutional mm -hmm. reform? So the average person would not know that. That is why I say you educate first. Either the government pick key areas we need changes in, and then you get the professionals to craft that for you. We're doing it in a mixed up way. So People don't even know what we have. The same minister, if I go ask the minister of public service how much he knows the, co the constitution, I wonder how much he actually knows everything in this constitution. Mm -hmm. Very few people study it out because you have to be a constitutional lawyer that wants to do this. It's, it's very in-depth. For example, another thing in the constitution, it speaks about the executive. The executive consists of the public service. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of things in here that protect public officers. But do they use it? No. Do they know their rights? No. Can it be improved? Hell yes, it can be improved. So mm -hmm. something like that. Like I just think it has to be segmented with what is in the constitution. So then how does Matt come into play with all of this? What, okay. is, what is the, the objective of moving ahead together in, in light of us having this conversation about okay, reform? Okay, several things. One, Matt is a grassroots movement. We hope that through our movement, we literally go down to the grassroots people and do the educational part. Okay. There's a lot of educational part that needs to be done. Mm -hmm. But we can't go and impose. We got to go here. Mm -hmm. So we're, the, the format we will be using is to visit different um, rural areas, towns, and have meetings to do two things. Mm -hmm. To hear what is the pulse of the people. Do they understand what's here? To give them some information. So let's say the majority of people are saying we are cane farmers and we feel that ASR has really messed us up for years. We don't want to hear about any constitution because the constitution hasn't protected us. We have to see if there is anything in there that does protect them. And we have to be realistic if we have to tell them, look, as it stands, how constitutions are, you would most likely not be able to get that in at that level. But this is the level where you get it in. And the level might be on that part that says that every man is entitled to have a, a fair and economic just policy for everyone to survive. Then you have to then know, how do you craft that to tell the government? Okay, you have it in the preamble, mm -hmm. but you don't have it under our right section. You see, the constitution is developed in certain parts. So it, I more think people are concerned with the rights parts. Mm -hmm. They may be concerned with how we are governed part. For example, a part in this constitution says that you've been, if you've been a convicted felon for over 12 months, you cannot run. But it says in the Commonwealth Caribbean, the United States is not the Commonwealth Caribbean, but a lot of our criminals have come from the USA mm -hmm. and they want to run for office. You have to ask, is that an outdated um, 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 provision? Should we change it? I know they, um, the other day the current government said they would change it, and I think they did change it to say throughout the country, to, to anywhere in the world. Um, is that outdated? Do we still want that? Should there be exceptions? Should it be that after 10 years, it must be considered that you've reformed and you should? There are these, these things. It's, to think that it would happen in this wrong of this government's administration would be too ambitious. The, in in okay. the conversation of decolonizing our system and, and doing this political, um, this constitution reform um, because we're having that conversation, a lot of the, the topics surrounding this probably, when they presented it in public, probably was not the, the more, most informative way. A lot of persons thought that they were going to be left out of decision making because this constitution reform only had X amount of people. Yeah. So now I need to talk for Carifuna yeah. Council, I need to talk yeah. for Creole Council. I, yeah. and, and so when we have all of these persons in one room, what, <laughs> how, how do you um, suspect the conversation about true constitution reform would go? I think it would be chaotic. I don't think you could reach decisions. So a solution I think, for me. I think, I think each of them should be allowed to write proposals into what they would want in their layman terms, in their concern. You see, when, when a politician is in office and they want to change the law, most of them don't know the law. So you go to your drafts person and you say, hey, um, we would like to reform like they did um, under the, under the um, previous administration. We would like to reform the area on criminal 
law in the criminal code. Mm -hmm. And this is what we would want. You give them the concept and then they draft it. And then you debate it or you, you, you um, take it to discussion until you tweak it to where you want. It doesn't mean it's perfect. You make it start work. Anytime you do something like that, then you have to have a period where you go and you review, did it work? Can we change it? Can it be improved? That is why laws keep on evolving. That would well, be Audrey, the better looking, way. We're looking at con constitutional reform, sorry, from the perspective of inclusivity. Mm -hmm. I think that's the primary reason why it was opened up to allow for representatives to sit on this particular commission to be able to share from their respective groups point of view what the issues are that they would want to see hammered out in the constitution i think that's the point of view from where the government comes from in terms of constituting this particular commission uh, if that is the point of view you didn't have to form a commission you had to reach out to different groups so that they debated with themselves and send in the proposals the way I see it, and based on how the, constitution, the Constitutional Commission has been created and the way they've carried out their first meeting, it seems as though you all want to sit down there to discuss, hoping that you support my position and I support your position. I don't think that's the way. Many people won't support each other's position. They're the extremist religious position. They're the extremist other um, anti-everything yeah. position. Mm -hmm. how, none of them will support. Let each person send in their submissions. Let me go and say, okay, I represent the indigenous group. I will, I will be the one um, loving my people, educating them, and coming with my position. It doesn't mean that you can't bring all your other <coughs> positions. You know, it doesn't mean the Garifuna Council can't bring its position. It doesn't mean that the um, churches can't bring their position. It doesn't mean that the disabled group can't bring their position. It does. It just doesn't. How will you decide in a group where everybody have a different position? That's my point. I'm not saying they don't have a purpose, but meeting and discussing. No, everybody should send in their paper position. And there should be a working group, I believe, with professionals who could translate it into what their positions are, that goes and listen or, or canvas with them. So let's say Christina Cox says, well, I want people to understand more about our indigenous position. And they have their own meetings. And at some point, they invite someone from the working group I'm calling to come and hear what is it. That person will then know how to translate it into what the legal terms are. And it doesn't mean that they'll get everything they want or they will draft it per se. They will go back to the government and say, these are the concerns. It's the government then who has to get the professionals to write it into the language that it is. It's still not done yet. You still have to canvas maybe the house or the people or whatever, the general public. Maybe there has to be a referendum. We don't know. Like one of the things I hear people say they want to change some is the system how we are governed. Some are saying, let's do like Barbados. And some are saying, no, 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 no. What, with Guatemala still threatening? We don't think it's a good position. Some of people still believe England will come and save us. They don't know that won't happen. And that's a huge one. Huge one. So you, you, can't, okay. you can't put in the hands but this of is people everything else. I think you should put in the hands of each group what is their interest. This is mm. only one of perhaps several issues that Matt would be targeting essentially or working well, on. Well, right? we would want to be able to do the educational part yeah. so that people understand what's in the constitution. Okay. My question, Audrey, beyond, beyond the issue of constitutional reform, my question to you is this. In my short lifetime, I've seen grassroots movement come and go. What longevity are we looking at for Matt? What are we looking at? Are we looking at something that would eventually perhaps morph into a third party? What are we actually looking at? No, no. For Matt, if anybody from the group arises or eventually want to go into the political arena, of course, we support them if they're one of ours. But no, Matt is coming up with a structure where it has to live in perpetuity beyond the, the, the individuals. So one of the mantra um, to the group has always been, and we have our own conversations, away from the public is that this is for the long haul. That's mm -hmm. one. Two, we need to raise other people. I am gonna die soon. There has to be others who are willing to be activists, others who are motivated to want to be involved. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have been with the groups, every group that has disappeared. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm the one of the few still standing. I have been 
from my time when I was at BCB and we were made into a corporation. I have been in advocacy since then fighting. I have been in all sorts of groups. I've been with Oceana. I have supported COLA. I supported ABC or whatever. Mm -hmm. And all of them had their own political agendas. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and I remain and that's that's precisely what makes I, I know. different. And I remain standing and I'm thinking, so you asked me what, what motivated me. So one of the other things that motivated me was like, hey, there has to always be pressure groups on the outside. And well, it can't be that when I pass away, there aren't people. These so sure. called grassroots movements turn out <clears throat> to be springboard for persons' political career interests. We've seen what came out of ACB. We've seen what eventually became of COLA and its leadership. We've seen this thing has perpetuated on time and, and on. time again. Yeah, not so fully because how is the this big, not that? big A didn't spring into um into but um persons political persons things. That I've seen the unions produce more political agendas and put forward their people and that. And 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 I I don't want you all to make it seem that if people go into politics, it's a bad thing. No, no, no. Let no, me no. tell you why. Because for too long we like to but tell people um, not talk about religion, but using politics, the platform and whatever, for self serving. The, <laughs> the the point of of Matt is to I I to hold those in power accountable. Yes. Right. So what kind of um, membership uh, goal, long term or, or short term, would you have for Matt in 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 the case of perhaps maybe not being affiliated particularly to any any political party, um, do they have to be bipartisan? Do no. they or maybe mean objective and so forth? Let me tell you how it started. I put a post up on Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, I wish you all would have it to put it up. And in less than 24 hours, over 100 people said they would want to join. People I don't even know. If I know three of them from before, that's a lot. People from all over the country, I don't even know. People whom when I met last Saturday, was so amazing what they're doing. They're already little activists in their own areas. Mm -hmm. They have this passion. So I call them the founding members, the first founding members, where we are working on what is the structure, what will be our constitution and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So that's the founding members. We're recruiting people where we want people who are supporting members. And we're asking people to pay $10 a month if you support us. Mm -hmm. That's $120 a month. Reason being because, like you said, the other previous um, entities had money from behind. Now we know who was supporting COLA. Now we know who ACB was. Mm -hmm. Now we know how so many others were before. Mm -hmm. Now we know who were the ones in the union getting money, land, and everything. And that's what creates the skepticism, Audrey. Yes. Okay, exactly. Because there's always an ulterior yeah, motive but I, I can't live, agenda I can't, I can't pay the price to other people. Yeah. Right. I, have stood, I have stood the test of time. Mm -hmm. I was once a senator for the UDP, and that has not stopped me to go after them. Mm -hmm. I have stood the test of time, so please don't cloak me with their, mm -hmm. with their nonsense. I'm trying to put something in place that outlives me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so the other membership is the general membership. So some of our members have said to me, what if they infiltrate? What if they have this agenda? I tell them I'm a woman of faith. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If they're there for that, trust me, everything comes to, to fruition mm -hmm. with time. Mm -hmm. Those will fall away. Those who are true to the movement will stay. Those who are not will go. But the thing is that what makes systems work is that you have to put systems in place. Mm -hmm. BNTU doesn't fall apart because BNTU has a structure. Mm -hmm. Cola didn't have a structure. Giovanni made all the decision and at a women of fancy. Everybody knew that. Or well, Shana we saw it that suit, way. <laughs> Shana would suit because it's an NGO that requires that you, you um, do policies and principles in place. I was very instrumental on how we came up with our format. It will withstand because of the structure we do. Mm -hmm. And I won't discuss the details of that structure because there's a legal process that you in place so that when people infiltrate, they would eventually just be uncovered and discovered. Mm -hmm. And nothing is wrong if people in MAT eventually want to get involved in political um, work because I would think it is the best place to, to breed them from, mm -hmm. that they come from a system where they know what we are about. Another breed of political people. Sea Will, which I don't know if you all know Sea Will. Sea Will is this Caribbean institute with, that empowers women to get into politics. Mm -hmm. um, people who were part of it that have gone into politics is definitely the young lady from PG Fern and Tracy Panton. Mm -hmm. And we see it, it's they're, they're, they're in the movement, but what have they really done? Mm -hmm. Where is the refresher courses for them? 
So we're not saying we have all the answers, but we're saying it's a good breeding ground to, to pinpoint people. And I will make no excuse or apology if anybody in our group says, look, I want to throw my hat in the political arena. Mm -hmm. The thing is, we would hope people who want to do that. We have to dismantle the PUDP system. You all have seen it. When we were under UDP, what happened? Bloated contracts, CEOs, all kind of perks and benefits, land scanners. And the PUP just came in and we have the same problem. So, and before this, I, I'm old enough to tell you when I joined, it was an opposition that was crumbled. Dean Barrow, Erwin Contreras, and um, Finnegan were the only ones in the house. And they asked me to join, not because they really thought that I had their philosophy. They needed to start with fresh faces. And of course, I was only 27. I was naive. I went in believing that it was about the people. I traveled this entire country. I know what it is to go meet with the people. I know what it is to organize. I just didn't have that political ambition. Mm -hmm. And my same party undermined me. Did it matter to me? The same POPs tried to lock me up. Ask them. Some of them are in power. They dragged me through the courts. They took away so, my child. Do you feel so, as though you would be So fighting. I have withstood it. Um, yes. But do you feel as if though you would be fighting an uphill battle, attempting to to dismantle the so-called PUDP system. Of course it's I'll ingrained be, in our society of that we only be, see of two course colors I'll be red fighting and blue. An uphill battle. Do you know what it took me to decide to not walk away and know that in my lifetime I may not see it? Mm -hmm. I am not being um, I think many have tried <laughs> yes. and and, and yeah. the efforts have many been have futile tried, at best. Many have tried but I think the difference is they have all said in the name of the poor and do they go and meet the poor? If everything that was done in the name of the poor, we wouldn't have a 60% poverty rate <laughs> yeah. right now. Fair enough. Okay? Fair enough. So and, 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 I know, and I know that people will be skeptical, but I have to give it a try. Mm -hmm. And I know that it's ingrained in people to want to take that $50 and that $100. We will not do that. But you have to live it by example. I, I mean, I have been, I've been where both parties, I mean, I've been on the outside for both. Even when I was in my own political party, I was the outsider. When, we, when it came down to the vote, will we accept money from Lord Ashcroft? Everybody was for it, I was against. When it came to the thing, will we, this was a key one, will we um, quickly give nationality to immigrants and land so that they vote for us? I was against it, the majority was for it. I could give you the list of things. Why do you think I, oh, I talk openly with my experience with Dean Barrow and what, not one day he can sue me? Because he knows I come from the, the belly of the beast. What has been my experience with the PUP? They've done everything to try and lock me up, to convict me. It's a pity in those days you didn't have social media. Mm -hmm. So when it comes mm. to, the, to, the, to the brunt of it all then, the, the central goal for Matt is to educate the persons to remove themselves out of this PUDP state of this color, of this and, colorism. And um, you'd be surprised there are democracy. more people in kind than that that you all give credit to. They just don't have the viable option of where to go. And then where Because that's what shocked me when I met these people. I think that I think that we we know they're out there and I and I do agree with you that they're out there in the in in the numbers. We talk about it a lot in our own they just circles, they just but there is not a space, the space for them. and a space to right. join. So then when we talk about um, membership uh, membership fees and so forth, um, where would those proceedings be going to? The, the proceeds? Yes. To our organization. Okay. Because remember, one of our biggest expenses will be transportation and moving around. And the way we are organized, we have people in each district, so in each district they'll organize. Clearly, we'll open our homes to each other. It has to be a low budget thing, but I don't know what why I, it I doesn't fear. concern me so much. When I was with Ocean, I had a, what, like a budget of less than half a million dollars. And we move this entire country. I, I think my my I think I ask about these kinds of things because we like you said, rightfully mentioned, we've seen these groups come, we've seen them go. We we, we you said structure yeah, is a huge but, part of yeah. it, but how and accountability you accountability right. within your own organization. Right. But then how do if you, you went to call to and ask them for an audit, they couldn't give you. If you went to A, B, C or A C B and asked them for an audit, they couldn't give you because they were getting money from interest groups. And then how do you how do you one structure um <coughs> these 100 plus members into your into your group how do you um hold them accountable when they're following we short? hold each other oh, look, accountable you motivate I, them <coughs> to continue what moving I see, forward what i, I, I see think and I, what i've known mm -hmm. is that when it comes to these kinds of movements there's a certain ebb and flow where interest is concerned mm -hmm. so it's the hot new thing right now 
You so find people who galvanize mm -hmm. around it. Eventually, their interest peters off. Do you remember what I said was our first mantra? Mm -hmm. It is only those who are in it for the long haul. Mm -hmm. That's my reminder to the group every day. It mm -hmm. is only for those who are in it for the long haul. I deal with all the skepticism by telling myself that what should be will be. Mm -hmm. I honestly believe that. I don't know. I have it. seen through my lifetime things come and go, and what should remain constant will remain constant. I cannot speak for the passion and the commitment of everyone, mm -hmm. but those who are in it for the long haul will stay with it. I, and that happens in every organization. Ask Senator Elena Smith with the union. Mm -hmm. Ask her. Ask people in CWU. Go to the unions as examples. I was a member of the Girl Guides. I was a member of um, the Boy Scouts. Well, then time they called it cadets because we could join in. Mm -hmm. I was a member of so many organizations. I have seen from a child, which unfortunately young people don't have these days, how we join clubs, what we do, we pay our little five cents membership fee, how that goes, and what is, what is the key? We have in writing a system as to what you will put in place. Why the government doesn't work? Because we have these rules <coughs> that they don't follow and the rules that we need to change to make them be accountable, they won't do it because they have to self-police themselves. The reason we have all these people of varying background and strangers is because we're not there because we're best friends. We're there because we have one common value. And, and that's what keeps me going. And we've been in the making since the 1st of September, and we held our first meeting, and we said that's the day we were established, on the 11th of September. And the people have showed up, and they keep showing up. We don't have to expose everything we do behind the scene, how we organize, what expertise everybody have. We, you could go on our Facebook page, that's where you'll see a lot of going on. Mm -hmm. But what warms my heart is that we have skilled people, very skilled people, mm -hmm. in administration, in technology, in all kinds of things, one, but two, the amount of them who are already doing some form of acti activism in their community or and the amount of them that are younger people that have joined and that's what we want we want some we may not get to see what i would want to see in my lifetime but the thing is we've planted the seed mm -hmm. it's like when i was a little girl we had 4-h and 4-h has lived on because there was a module those things don't happen these days. Like when we were growing up, everybody too captivated by internet and video games. And so we're trying to go back to use an old system, an old and proven and tested system of membership, but using the current technology. Now I can reach them with one, with one text and say, hey, I'm open on your, open your so eyes this morning. So we're, we're <laughs> winding down our conversation at this point. However, I would want for you to perhaps leave one message for our viewers in terms of why the need or why the interest or why should they be a part of this movement what do you say to them well i would say to them go look at the movie the matrix it's a perfect analogy if you're the guys in the black suit it means that you're trapped in the pudp system mm -hmm. If you're, what was the name of the guy Fisher? Lawrence, Lawrence Fisher. Lawrence Fisher. Lawrence Fisher, but his name in the movie. Morbius. Yeah. If you're Morbius and Keanu Reeves, then you're one who wants to be outside of the matrix. Okay. You have to take a step back and ask yourself, how ingrained are you in the system? Don't swallow the blue pill. And if you want to stay in that system, good for you. But the, your kids are waking up. They will come into our <coughs> system. <coughs> so mm -hmm. it's simply that. It has to be an individual choice. And I may seem too optimistic, but I believe that if I change one person, it's one more person to join. Mm -hmm. And I know there are young people out there with skills and talents and ideas how to move this country forward. We just haven't created the, place, the space for them. Mm -hmm. If I had the time, I could tell you that we're not only about the constitution, we are social activists too. Mm -hmm. We want to see changes in the family court system. It is. Uh, havoc we want to see changes in the educational system there's so much more mm -hmm. that we need to do we want to see public officers dealt with differently police officers bdf nurses they're the backbone of our system when hurricane was on they were all out there 
and what benefits do they have? How do they live? Some of my biggest clients are from those entities and they live from paycheck to paycheck. It's sad to see. Mm -hmm. And so there's, there's just so much more. And so we will tackle political issues. We will tackle social issues. We will tackle health issues. We will be a support group to entities. So if um, BNTU come and say, we, do you accept our fight? We will join them. If we don't, we won't join them. That is activism. It doesn't mean we are enemies. Um, we have a core group, and that's how decisions will be made. It's not my decisions. You all just have to give us a break and see how we organize. Maybe the government can learn a thing or two from us about mm -hmm. how you, you don't self-police. You put check and balances. Because right now, in the constitutional reform, the best check and balances are against the politicians. The minute your signature is on one of those questionable documents, you should be in prison. They don't want to make the changes. Um, we, we what? We, the UDP, $90 million in taxes they forgave. $90 million in land taxes and up to today we can't see who those people are. The minute you do something like that, we should lock you up and you pay back for it. Mm -hmm. You think they will make those changes in the law? No, but those are the changes we need. Mm -hmm. You see, I'm at the point where I think we make the radical changes so that those who are our leaders, do you think they all need a Prado? No, that's the people's money and gas. Let them get a basic vehicle with a budget and you go from there. You went in it for the service. Do you think I would keep CEOs in government? No, that's a whole big salary. Let the professional, let us go back to having a professional public service. I worked in the public service. I've lived live long enough, been exposed long enough, worked long enough in the system. I can tell you so much about this country more than you can imagine. I have institutional knowledge, having been in the public service, having been in the political arena, having been in the environmental movement, the social movement. In the media, I was exposed to so much and now being in the, the law, the, the legal area. I mean, we have a court that's falling apart, a court building that's falling apart. Mm -hmm. We have judges who don't have tenure. These are things yeah. the politicians can fix with the stroke of a pen, I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. But, but if it's you a keep, lack of will. It's a lack of will. Yeah. So mm -hmm. either people join me because they want a change or they stay, they stay in with, the, with the blue pill. Keeps, keep swallowing right. the blue pill, stay with the <laughs> men in black. Or join me, Keanu, and Keanu Reeves <laughs> and <laughs> Melbourne Fisher. That's his name, right? Lawrence, Lawrence, Lawrence Fisher. Fisher. Lawrence Fisher. It, it's All the right. best analogy I can give. And please keep on inviting me. Sure. Even when sure. I don't speak well of your, your bosses. But if they censor me, social media is there. there I will come right in front there and do lives. <laughs> Thank <All right>. <laughs> <laughs> Always a pleasure, Audrey. <laughs> Thank, <laughs> Thank you. you for coming in. And of course, we will want to know once Matt is fully established and running yeah we have a, we already we have our um, executive but perfect i want to train them to come on board we'll have training for them to come and do the media wrongs instead of me perfect thank you audrey and with that we're going to take another break and we'll be back with more oie Stay tuned.